Hi guys, this is Heffy Wheeler. You can find me over at my own Instagram. It's at HeffyX. I am super stoked to be here today with hair socials. I'm going to be talking about all things social media. So if you haven't already, um, lockdown is a perfect time to really look at how we are utilising social media to business success. Um, I think sometimes we can really focus so much on how many likes we've got and how many followers we've got, and we can view that as being successful. However, in reality, anyone can go online and buy 100,000 followers and thousands of likes. And in reality, does that make you more successful? Um, um, no, <laughs> is, the, is, the, is the short answer. There may be um, different perks that you will get from having a bigger following. But in reality, it doesn't mean that you're going to have more clients. Um, it doesn't mean that you are successful. It just means that you have got followers online. Um, so I think sometimes we can totally become really... Um, motivate in trying to get likes and followers and not really look at the other ways that we can utilize social media to actually grow our business so for me personally i've won two awards um because of my use of social media one with salon business awards and one with the national hairdressing federation so um and it's not for the reasons that you might think because there are a lot of people that have got a lot more followers than me but it's more of the way that i've utilized social media to gain um success to grow my business and that's what i'm going to talk to you a little bit about today so i'm going to tell you a little bit about how i personally utilize social media and made it into a successful business model and um, so for me now my salon we don't even have a salon phone um all of our appointments are done through facebook and instagram we are fully digital and this has had so many benefits for us, especially during lockdown. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my uh, history and talk to you a little bit about how I utilise social media to, to grow my business. So my story starts at college, I did two years at college, and then I went to a really big chain salon. Um, at that salon, I specialised in just cutting, and I worked there for um, a good few years. But unfortunately, I was working for someone that was particularly unkind to me, and I decided to move on away from that so I went to a, a different salon and the guy that owned it was like I definitely going to work for me but I want you to do colouring and not just cutting so I was like oh no way like I can't do any um colour like I've not done colour since college I'm not like practicing it like you know I can't do any colour so they um basically um gave me like a little bit of training it was actually just um shadowing like the head technician for three days and then they put me in a little pop-up shop just wasn't really what I wanted to do um you know, I was kind of given this job and it wasn't really what, you know, it wasn't really what I thought it was going to be. So I had like a bit of a court life crisis and I was like, I don't know what I want to do. Um, I can't see myself doing hairdressing anymore because I can't really find anywhere that I feel like it's right for me or that I fit in. So I had a court life crisis and I went over to Canada for a few months to go and stay with some family. And while I was over there, I was literally thinking like, I don't want to do hair anymore. And I was looking at different jobs in supermarkets, having a look, you know, trying to figure out where I was going to go moving forward. And I was like, I think I was like 22 at this point. So at this time, I started getting loads of, of my old clients messaging me through through Facebook and Instagram. They're like, oh, that hair, you're still doing hair. Um, you know, I would, I would love for you to do my hair when you come back from Canada. So I made that decision. I was like, right, I'm going to do like a little bit of freelance, but just until I figure out where I want to go just until I figure out what I want to do. So I never had like a business model or a business plan. So when I came back from Canada, I started doing a little bit of mobile. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no business plan. I had no real goals for the future regarding hairdressing because as far as I, as far as I was concerned, I wasn't really interested in staying in the industry. I didn't feel like it was a place for me um, because of my previous experiences. So I had £30 in my bank account and um, I went to do my first client and literally went and bought the colour um from the wholesalers to do this client's hair and then wanted the client's hair and the pay for the service and then go and go and buy the colour for my next client's hair. Um so it was very much starting from scratch and I have um very proud that I've self-funded my way all the way to having my beautiful salon I'm in now with seven staff members which all stems back from this pinnacle point where I started doing mobile. So what I did um, at the very start of this mobile journey was I made a Facebook and an Instagram that was set to um, my, my mobile business. And I didn't really realise at the time, but I was already starting to brand myself um, without even really realising it. I just kind of made this place to keep all my clients in one place. Um, I've never really been that keen on 
phone calls, <laughs> especially when you're driving around. Anyone that's watching this that's freelance that drives around knows that it's um, it takes so much time to keep stopping and talking to people on the phone. So I did my bookings through um, Facebook mainly. Anyone that was interested that messaged me to my personal Facebook or Instagram, I would then filter them through to the Facebook business page. Um, and that allowed me to, you know, keep all my clients in one place that worked really well for me. So I made these two pages and then what I would do is when I went around a client's house, I would be like, oh, like, please, can you follow me on Instagram? Please, can you follow me on Facebook? And in turn, that would lead to user-generated content. So my clients would then start um, taking photos of the hair and tagging me and they would start leaving me reviews. And the thing, I think that I noticed that that was like a pinnacle point for me because I noticed that that user-generated content from each, each client that I was doing, that was sharing a post, that was sharing a review that was um, tagging me on Facebook. I was getting more and more and more clients from that. Um, and that started like a snowballing effect that happened quite quickly. So I did mobile probably for about about three or four months. And I was literally working from like nine in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. I was so, so, so busy. So um, looked good for me, but not so good for my mum. Um, so because I was still living at my mum's house, she then let me take over her spare room. Um, and yes, yeah, so <laughs> I like, I do laugh thinking about it because I would literally be, um, you know, like washing someone's hair over the bath in my mom's bathroom and like, <laughs> like there would be like red hair dye dripping off onto the floor as I'm like running them back through to the spare room. So I was trying to be this like, you know, this like hairdresser that did all quirky stuff. And in reality, it was just like my mom coming and like having a go at me, like while I was doing someone's hair, like you've trashed the bathroom again. <laughs> or like, you know, when you're a kid and, um, and the worst thing that can happen is like one of your parents comes in and offers your friends drinks and snacks. Like that was literally what my like my mom. <laughs> well, yeah, it was it was like I'm so grateful that she gave me the opportunity. Um, because bringing everything into one place allowed me to do more clients. Um, but again, very very quickly, a matter of probably another three months, my waiting list was at about two or three months. Um, and I just couldn't I couldn't get people in quick enough. Um, and obviously because I couldn't have two clients at the same time because it was a really small room that I was in. I could only do like a certain amount of clients a day. I couldn't um, do clients while in between, like what one was developing. So I was like, I need somewhere else. I need, I need something else. And again, you know, just the way that I was sort of, kind of not only really realizing what I was doing, but I was marketing my brand um, and my hairdressing in a way through social media that was snowballing really, really, really quickly. And I was struggling to keep up with the demand from the clients. So um, I then started renting the room in the back of a barbershop. So this was like a proper, like, I think the guy that was the barber, like he's awesome. He's like 80, like he'd been doing it for so long, this like old Italian guy. So I was just like in this uh, really small room in the back of his shop with just like one chair and a backwash. And you could, you could like, you could probably touch um, the walls with, if you had your arms stretched out, like it was super, 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 super small. Um, but again, like, you know, I was then doing clients in between. So I was doubling the amount of clients I was doing. But again, like six months later, I was so, so, so busy. Um, I took on a apprentice. And I took on a Saturday girl just to kind of like help me out um, with the clients that I was doing. And I was like, okay, this is, you know, I need, I need somewhere big out already. So I came across the beautiful salon um, that I'm in right now. Um, so yeah, basically I was, I was walking past with my mom one day and she knows the landlord. So she was like, oh, like, is this shop available? And then we had a little look around and it was so big. And I was thinking, oh my God, like I cannot, this is, this is way too big for just me. So um my other half was um, tattooing over in a different town at the time. So I kind of rung them up and I was like, let's just, let's just do it. Let's just get this sharp. You tattoo from the, the first floor, I'll have the ground floor. And literally, let's just do it. Um, <laughs> so it was really crazy because, again, like totally self-funded. Like I turned this £30 that I started with, started with into the shop that I have now. Um, I've got seven staff members. We are really successful and it's going really well. And um, it's really cool because I never really planned for this to happen. But the way that I, one of the first things I did when I started my business was, was I made them social media accounts and I kind of drove all of my clients to them. That's really how I started to, to grow quickly. And I've kind of figured out the perfect formula for um, generating new clients and retaining clients through social media. So it's allowed me to, continue to have like a steady stream of new clients coming in just from seeing our work on Instagram, mainly seeing our work on Facebook. And then also it's um, a really good to connect with your existing clients, especially in times like this when we're in a lockdown. You know, I think the thing that's really cool about social media is that we don't have to have that client 
in our salon to be live, delivering an exceptional customer service. So obviously, you know, at one point your client would come in, uh, you deliver the service and they go and that's it. But with social media, we can continue to engage with that client. We can continue to build emotional and relationships with that client. Um, so, you know, we are still, we are still in, that client's, in that client's mind and that client is still loyal to us and to our brand. Um, so that's a really cool thing about social media that we can continue to, to network and connect with our clients. And again, you know, with hitting new clients, if you've got your regulars that are constantly um, connecting with you online, they're advocating your business, they're sharing your work, they're commenting your things, other people will see that. So the way I see it is that when a client will tag us in a post, when a client will leave us a Facebook review, when a client will do a check-in on Facebook for any of their family or friends or followers or whoever that see that check-in, number one, it's the brand awareness, obviously. That's their first um, time that they've seen you so then they now know that we exist. But also it's a positive, um, it's a kind of like a positive awareness because it's someone that they trust and someone that they know that is saying something positive about you. So straight away, that person has got that, that positive association with, with your, your shop or your brand, um, which in turn then is going to mean that maybe they'll talk about you. Maybe someone will say, oh, like, I really want to have my hair done. Oh, well, I know this person who went here or I've been thinking about going to this salon. And again, like, you know, the momentum that you will get from, from, from your clients advocating for you is like crazy and will really lead to a business success. And I think the thing that is really interesting is that when we're talking about social media, People never think about any of that. When people message me and they're like, they're asking me about social media, it's like, how do I get more followers? How do I get more likes? But in reality, when we think about it, do likes and followers mean that you are successful? No. <laughs> you know, I could go tomorrow and buy 100,000 Instagram followers and I could go and pay and buy 1,000 likes for each one of my pictures. Am I going to be any more successful? No. <laughs> So I think that we can very easily focus on, on, the, on the wrong thing and um, we can put all of our energy into trying to grow our social media platforms, but we don't really look underneath at the roots of that, um, at our branding, at our connecting with our clients, at building relationships with our clients um, and growing your own like personal brand. We just kind of think, right, I need followers. I need, I need likes. But in reality, I think that it's a really like unhealthy thing to see your value um, as how many likes or followers that you've got. And we've all been there. Like we've all been looking at other people and been like, well, you know, like why, why don't I get that? You know, why don't I get that many likes? Why don't I have that many followers? But in reality, I think that we can focus on the wrong things. And like, I personally think that the lockdown is a perfect opportunity to really look at what we're doing as business owners, as um, individuals on our social media to help grow our businesses. So I do um, a social media social media course. It's called Not Just Likes, um, and it totally goes into all everything: um, how to use different platforms, how the algorithms work, how to create content. It goes into some um, marketing framework. So we're really looking at not just you know putting up photographs, but how to actually properly market on social media, and loads of the stuff as well. So that is just thirty pound, um, and I'm going to talk to you about a few different things um, that, um, that are on that course. I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, Instagram engagement. So I think that we've all felt victimized from time to time um, at, at the Instagram engagement algorithm. So, you know, I know personally, I will be like, my, my post is super well, uh, my videos are doing really good, everything's going really well on, on Instagram. And then one day, like everyone, like my views on my, um, and my reels will go, whoop, my, my likes will like go right down. It's like, okay, they've changed the algorithm again. So it can be really, really frustrating. Um, but I'm going to give you a few hints and tips that have worked for me and different things that you can try when you're doing your Instagram. So I think number one is the content that you're making. You know, you can't expect people to want to follow you. You can't expect to get customers. You can't expect people to be engaging with your work if the content that you're creating is not visually appealing. So when we're actually looking at creating the content on Instagram, because um, content is the most important thing, people will message me and be like, you know, oh, like I don't really get that many people like my pictures and I'll have a look. And the grid is just like a bit messy. Um, the photographs aren't that great. The hair is amazing, but it's not always about the hair. It's about the composition of the whole image. So we really need to be thinking about, you know, the 
first and foremost, the content that we're creating and how we're creating it and how it looks and how it looks when we put it on the grid. So there's some really cool apps that you can get that gives you like a mock of what your Instagram grid will look like. So some hairdressers will do like a, um, like a photo of the hair like here and then the inspiration picture in the middle, which is really cool. Um, for me personally, I'll do like reels down one side, I'll do hair pictures down the middle column and then the end column will be like selfies and me and my family and a bit more about my personal life. So I think it's important to have like a really um, visually appealing and very easy to read Instagram grid. Because if it's too messy, if it's too mishmash, if it's too kind of like off brand and off point, it can be really confusing and people aren't really going to spend the time looking at that. But if we can be putting pictures of our work up um, that are really going to draw the eye in and lay our grid out in a way that people are going to want to check us out, obviously that's the first step to having that growth online. I know it sounds really crazy, like how can I get my branding in a picture of someone's hair? But it can literally be anything from adding accessories to the hair. It can be the background that you're using. Um, when you're applying, when you're putting the picture up, it could be the caption that you're using, you know, really to show like what you're about. And this is something that I kind of learned um, from doing it. So when I first opened my Instagram account, um, <laughs> I scrolled to the very, very bottom of my salon account, which is called HX Hair. And it's really awful. <laughs> I mean, my hairdressing and my taste has obviously improved drastically since this point. But you know, when I'm looking at that, the actual Instagram grid and feed is really messy. Um, you know, the, the backgrounds that I'm using are just like awful. There's just like some like wall with like some weird tiles on it. <laughs> um, it's not really engaging. It's not really nice to look at. Whereas now, you know, I really think about a little bit more, okay, what backgrounds am I going to have on my photographs? Uh, what captions are going to use? So captions is a really important one because we can use the caption again, to create more engagement. The more engagement that we have, the more of an algorithm boost we're gonna have, and in turn, the more engagement we're gonna have. <laughs> I know it sounds really confusing, but if you have a photo and someone comments on it, um, and you comment back, that's a conversation going. That app is then gonna reward you for being social. So the more comments that we can get, the more um, you know conversations, the more shares, the more story shares, the more um, that it's gonna be seen from people outside, outside our following, the more that we're going to come up on the explore page, for example. Um, but also, like, the algorithm will mean that all of your followers won't see your posts, but the more people that comment on it and the more people that engage with it, the more of your followers will see it, if that makes sense. So we can think about what we're putting in the captions. So the captions are a really good um, way to get the conversation going. They're a really good way to start boosting your engagement. You know, you can think about asking questions. You can give um, your formulas. You can, you know, talk about how you did something. You can make it... So we can read that caption and it's something that is really engaging. That's something that people are going to want to comment on and people are going to want to save it and share it, whether it's informative um, or like a bit of a mini blog. We can talk about the colour work that we've done. We can be, you know, delivering like an educational tool by saying what kind of um, colours that we're using. I think at one point, a lot of hairdressers would be very, you know, would, would not want to talk about the product that they've used or the formulas that they've created. But, you know, I think that especially now in this day and age, people love to share their formulas. They share how they've done things. And they like to help and support each other through that. So that's a really good way to engage with people. And also if you're putting information in your captions, um, savable or shareable is really important because if you get saves on your pictures on Instagram or you get shares, you're going to get an algorithm boost, which means that you're going to see more engagement. So, um, you know, we've got to be thinking about what people are going to want to come back to. So for me personally, I'll make like a bit of a mini blog. So I will, um, you know, like post a photograph and it might even not be hair related. It might be about something to do with my daily life or my, my children. And I'll write, you know, about how I feel about a certain thing. And I will find that posts like that will get a lot of saves because it's things that people want to come back to. So, you know, when we're doing our, our hairdressing content, you know, what can we write in that caption? that is gonna make people wanna come back and make people wanna save that. Because like I said, we're gonna be getting an algorithm boost through it being saved. Another thing as well that is a really big one <laughs> that I see so many people not doing. Um, so if you were out and someone came up to you and said, oh, like, I really love your hair, you wouldn't just be like, <laughs> walk off. But on social media, like that is what so many people totally do. So. Um, you need to make sure that you're applying to everyone and that you're pushing them conversations out there because, again, that is going to help boost your algorithm. So, essentially, if we are getting engagement, then we're going to boost the algorithm and then we're going to see more engagement. Um, these apps basically reward us for being social. 
So the more conversations um, and the more engagements and connections that we can get, the more that the algorithm is going to lift. And this is when um, more people from outside our followers are going to start seeing us and noticing us. So that is a really, um, a really good way to start growing your Instagram. But like I said, I think that, you know, one of the key points is, you know, why are you growing your Instagram? Like, how is that going to benefit you? What is the type of content that you're putting out going to give you in return? Um, because you can grow your followers and you can have 10,000 followers, but you can have no clients from that. So, you know, it's good as well to pre-plan the kind of things that you're going to do, almost strategize your, your posts. So, you know, what are you, what are you going to try and do? Who do you want to, who do you want to engage with? Is it other hairdressers? Is it, um, clients? Do you want to do more, um, balayages? So you're going to start posting more balayage content. You know, it's always good to have a bit of a roadmap of, of what you want to achieve, um, from doing these posts. You can be as creative as you want with that, but I think it's definitely really important that we are using um, that space to create conversation. In turn, that is going to boost the algorithm and we are going to see more growth and more engagement. So in my opinion, one of the most overlooked platforms um, for hairdressers is definitely Facebook. We are so consumed by Instagram. I think because Instagram is a really visual platform, um, you know, hairdressers love it because we can click on someone's grid and we can look at all these hair pictures and it's satisfying and we love it. But for clients um, and to get clients, Facebook is an amazing opportunity. From obviously what I've touched on earlier, um, it's a bit more personal. So I feel like if someone does a check-in on Facebook, more people are going to pay attention to that um, than like a story share. It's a bit more personal um then that because obviously it's on their facebook page so when we have that good um online relationship with our clients it can be really good for lockdown too because we can keep selling we can sell um products we can do more marketing um while we're just sat in bed right we can be delivering that exceptional customer service without actually leaving the house which obviously we can't do now anyway um but yeah that's a really good reason to have a good connection and a good relationship with your clients online um, whether it's, you know, rather than using a box style that they're reaching out to you because they know that they can just message you and that you are there for them. Another thing that we can be doing during lockdown is digital consultations. So digi digital consultations are a really good opportunity, again, to deliver customer service um, and to reach out for new clients. So we can offer a free digital consultation. This can be um, face to face. So we can do like a Zoom chat or the client can send us photographs of their hair, they can send us photos, photographs of their inspiration, and we can send like a voice clip or a little video back talking about some ideas and sharing some things. So this is like a really good way to start, um, you know, growing your client base from home. Doing them digital consultations, obviously, you know, that client then is already had that consultation when you, um, when we open back up, it's going to be really, really, really busy. And we're not necessarily going to have time to keep stopping and starting every five minutes to give consultations out to new people that are walking through the door. So it's a really good opportunity to kind of like have that consultation prior. And then all we need is that client to come in, give them a quick skin test. They're ready to go. So, um, digital consultations are something that's really good. And I think like for me, I'm a salon owner. I've got a one-year-old and a two-year-old. That's not something that I particularly have time to do at the minute, but I'm getting my team members to, um, to do that for me while they're at home. Um, cause I've got a little bit more time in the hands. So, you know, that's another way that we can be utilizing our socials through lockdown, you know, doing the digital consultations. And also, you know, we can be prescribing the certain shampoos and conditioners, um, people can, you know, even something as simple as a story on Instagram and we can be like, you know, what are your hair care questions? And we can recommend products from our own personal shops that we are selling to, to people that are asking us questions about different things. So, you know, we really can be utilizing the social media to make sales now and also to have them um, clients lined up, ready to go, um, for when we're allowed to open again. So another way we can use social media is by getting reviews by clients we can put ourselves higher up in a google search so um yeah you know just your clients leaving you reviews on your facebook will make you come up as a higher search result and then um reviews will come up also when people are googling for a hairdresser so that's like another thing that's really 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 cool right um also like potential black brand collaborations is another thing um it doesn't matter how many followers you've got if your work is good and a brand that you use sees that work it's very possible that a collaboration or a relationship may start 
Um, also, you know, connecting with your clients, connecting with your existing clients. We can use um, Facebook, we use Instagram to target a whole new audience. Like if we want to add a new service to our salons, if we want to um, start doing blondes, if we want to stop doing a certain thing and focus on something else, the content that we put out there and the way that we do it, we can use to engage in the type of target clientele that we want and bring them in um, to the salon and make them our new our new clients. Um, yeah, so there really is a, a lot of a lot of different perks from having a, a business online. And again, for me, the main perk has been building up a clientele literally from nothing. So I know I touched on a little bit earlier that what worked for me was having them accounts, the Facebook and the Instagram account. So I think that a really important thing to start doing, um, if you're not already, is get them clients that you have in the salon, when, we, when we're finally in the salon again, or even if you've got a, a mailing list, start getting them clients to your socials. So, you know, you could send an email out and be like, please, can you give us a review on Facebook? You could um, put something out on Instagram saying, please, can you, um, you know, please, can you leave us a review on Facebook? And then that'll filter some of your Instagram client clients to start leaving you reviews on Facebook. And if you think about that, whoever they've got on Facebook as their friends and family are then going to see that review. It's going to build a positive brand awareness that's potentially going to lead to even more clients. So, you know, there's things like that that we can start doing during lockdown to make sure that we are really spreading that brand awareness. And the thing that's really cool as well is that we can do that um, literally from just sitting on our butts and doing nothing. You know, I think that we can be using um, this time in lockdown to really start having a little bit more fun with our social media because it can feel like there is so much pressure all the time. But, you know, we have got um, different ways to, to, you know, we've got different platforms we can use. So, like, I absolutely love TikTok. I find it so much fun. I've been doing lives on there. I've been sharing my knowledge with different people. I've been answering people's questions and I've been building my profile on TikTok just from like having a nice time and like hanging out with people and doing lives um, and, you know, like creating hair care content. I've just started YouTube as well. So it's like an opportunity to start doing these things that maybe make us feel a little bit more uncomfortable and just try and try out some new ideas because obviously when we are in the salon and we are so busy, um, we don't necessarily have the time to really work on these kind of like little mini projects. But, you know, it's there's benefits. There's so many benefits, obviously, for ourselves to be creative. It's got benefits for the hairdressers because we can create education for them. And also for our clients, like our clients love to see us do things like that. Our clients love to see our knowledge. They love to boast about, well, my hairdresser does this, my hairdresser does that. Like it just looks really good um, that for the clients to see that we're constantly working on ourselves. So this is the end of my little podcast takeover for Hair Socials. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Heffy Wheeler. As I said earlier, you can find me over on my own Instagram. It's at HeffyX. Bye, everybody.